This week, Rhea and I are joining the folks from Tickaboo to take you on an adventure in Bullfrog as we check out all the fun that can still be had in this magnificent area. Then, Rhea Stein shows off one of the greatest cities ever built as he ventures around the spectacular monuments and architecture of Istanbul, Turkey. Finally, we're joining the Ride the Brainwave event that brings Jeeps, motorcycles, and OHVs together to help families and children with life-threatening illnesses. It's all headed your way now. At Your Leisure is next. Scott Huntsman, I do believe we are in Lost Eden. This is Lost Eden on Lake Powell. How cool is this? Oh, great. Welcome to At Your Leisure, everybody. I'm Rhea Rossi Booth. And I'm Scott Huntsman. And you know, Chad and Tanya had to work. So it's the two of us <laughs> getting guys. to do this dirty job I right now. I feel so guilty. <laughs> no problem here. No, we are out here uh, recreating with uh, Ray Goldman from Tickaboo Lodge. And I'm telling you, we're, we're at Bullfrog. We, we launched at Bullfrog. People are saying, hey, don't go. There's not enough water. That's not true. Bullone. Beautiful new ramp. Yeah. All the way down into the water. No problem launching the boat. I mean, absolutely none. This is just like yeah. going to pile the way it's always been. We're like in 60 to 80 feet of water right yes, now. Yes, yes. Fish jumping. Oh, yeah. Just jumped over your side there. Hey, it's yeah. Lake Powell. You can't beat it. No, it really is. It's fabulous. And I think if you're reading reviews and you're hearing all this negativity, don't listen to it. Because honestly, we're like, we're checking this out to see if it's it's the real McCoy. And it's yep. just, this is fabulous. And there's nobody here. Nobody, nobody here. And we're still in 80 feet of water right I know. now. I know. Mean, I it's absolutely yeah. not a problem now. Yes, way. it's fabulous. Yeah. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to actually go talk to Ray Golden so he can tell us what is actually going on with the lake right now. Yeah, let's do it. North Lake Powell Marine and uh, Tickaboo Lodge, we just recently invested into some really nice boats. And the reason that we went for a whole new fleet this year is because we feel that Lake Powell is now starting to reveal some secrets. It's not like it was, uh, you know, 30 years ago. Everybody's uh, been a kind of hesitant about the low water. But to see some of the sights that you're going to see today is going to be quite special for anybody that wants to come down and give it a try. It literally is a new lake. Launching at North Lake Powell now is actually a little easier because of the uh, less traffic that you find here. It was probably one of the easiest launches that I've uh, done here in the five years I've been here. The people in the boating, the people that are in the boating, when their boat would break down and they would come up for repairs and they'd have two or three days to wait on parts, they would say, is there something else we can do while we're waiting? At North Lake Powell, uh, we've really uh, invested a lot of time and energy into uh, stabilizing and building a, an off-road uh, market. So we're really becoming a full season uh, resort area right now. It used to just be, when I first got here in 2016, it was nothing but boating from Memorial Day to Labor Day, but now we're year round. The water's green, the water's blue, it's very clear. There's very little boat traffic because everybody thinks it's low water. So right now is the time to come and explore. If you're into exploring, now's the time. Hey, you know what? This Yamaha boat is really cool. <laughs> and the <laughs> lake is wonderful today. Really, we are just having a ball out here. And all, you know, all that new equipment, all, all the boats, and he's got the razors, and he's got the, the beautiful the jet, ski. jet skis that we're going to be getting on here in a minute. Yes, I hope so. Really, this, this is definitely the place. Oh, man. I don't think Brigham Young has anything on this guy. <laughs> this is the place, not, for yeah. sure. Anyway, yeah. hang on, because we're going to head off to our where to. I'm Rhys Stein, at your leisure in rainy Istanbul, Turkey, a city of incredible monuments, including this guy, one of the most impressive buildings ever built, the Hagia Sophia. Anchoring one of the world's foremost architectural plazas, which include the equally massive Blue Mosque and the sprawling Topkapi Palace, the Hagia Sophia, as the Turks call it, looks like a pile of buildings haphazardly stacked on top of each other. A couple of Greek mathematicians and 10,000 of their friends built the place in the 6th century as a Byzantine Christian church. In the 13th century, it became a Catholic cathedral, then a Muslim mosque, a museum, and since 2020, a mosque again. 
it's a World Heritage Site. Non-Muslim visitors are welcome. Shoes are removed and women wear head coverings. The interior is overwhelming in size and beauty, from the marble floor to the soaring dome, an amazing 100 feet in diameter. Huge discs with Ottoman calligraphy with the names of Allah, Muhammad, and others decorate the interior. Early Christian mosaics, such as this depiction of Mary and Jesus, are now shrouded by curtains. Men only pray in the main hall before the ornate niche or mirab, which points toward Mecca. Women are relegated to an isolated area off to the side. Outside at sundown, families gather for a festive gathering to break the day of fasting to celebrate Ramadan. Because I have always wanted to come to Turkey. Turkey is just so full of history. It has been a dream of mine to go to Turkey. There are a lot of really good sites here. I was really amazed at the Anya Sophia. On the outside, it doesn't look near as impressive as it looks inside. Turn around and the massive blue mosque looms ahead. This 17th century mosque with its six minarets is impressive on the outside. Inside, well, not so much. It is now filled with scaffolding and temporary columns and walls, part of a complete facelift. It should look more like this and will again. And nearby Topkapi Palace presents a glimpse of the exorbitant lifestyles of the rich and famous Ottomans. Istanbul is the biggest city in Europe, and its main square features a huge monument honoring the 1923 founding of the country, with founding father Kemal Ataturk leading the charge. Independence Avenue, away from the square, is always crowded with tourists and shoppers. Along the way, our guide feeds us from exotic street food carts. Ice cream vendors double as wannabe magicians, to the frustration of their patrons. A San Francisco-style cable car leads to the end of the road at the Para Palace Hotel, where Agatha Christie is said to have written The Murder on the Orient Express. The sprawling Grand Bazaar, with its 4,000 shops, is perhaps the largest mall in the world. But our favorite was the smaller Spice Market, featuring a kaleidoscope of colorful spices, candies, and other delights, including an array of teas for, well, every purpose. A cruise on the Bosphorus, the only link between the Black and Mediterranean seas, takes us past waterfront mansions from the Ottoman period to the Rumelian Castle, the Ottomans used to conquer then Byzantine Constantinople. Istanbul is unique in so many ways, but one in particular. It's the only city on earth that straddles two continents. Over here, Asia, and over here is Europe. I'll tell you, the, the thing I love about it is it's scenically so interesting and so beautiful. The fact that it's on two continents, the fact that the city just sort of bleeds out over these beautiful bluffs and hills, I'm sure there's a culture and there's historical value, but I just love the ge geographically think it's beautiful. Reese Stein with this week's Where To Adventure in Istanbul, Turkey. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. I'm Katie Yardley, and this is my husband, Mark. Welcome to our kitchen. Today we are going to be cooking Yardley Steak Burger Soup. This is an amazing dish, super easy, and it's actually one of those, if you need to clean some veggies out of your fridge, it's perfect for that. So come on, let's start cooking. Start with two pounds Yardley Steak Burger. There, I'm gonna let you help with the dishes, honey. Now with this one, you actually wanna break it up into bigger chunks. You don't want too small a bites. As always, we season our meat. A little salt, a little pepper. All right, this is, this is looking nice. Now it doesn't have to be completely browned before you add your onions, carrots, and celery. So if you wanna hand me the bowl of already chopped up veggies, and they just can all go in at the same time. You wanna let these cook for probably about another five minutes and then we'll start adding the rest of the ingredients. Now we just want to do basic little, we'll throw in our Worcestershire right now, probably about seven or eight shakes. Not an excessive amount. And then we want to use the, uh, it's 
like a beef bouillon paste. I don't know if you guys have used it before. You can find it in any grocery store. Even Costco has it. But it's like a big paste, but it adds, it's not salty like the bouillon cubes. It just adds a nice beef base to it. It's wonderful. All right, honey, you want to pass me the potatoes, please? Sure. I'd love to. Honey, there's no cheese in this Where dish. Where the heck did that come from? <laughs> no cheese in this dish. I know it's I know it's not normal, but there is no cheese. Doggone it, I tried. All right. So once you get your potatoes in, just kind of stir them up a little bit. And then this is where it gets really easy. Your tomatoes. Doesn't that look amazing yeah, already? All right. This is one of my favorite, favorite soups of all time. I'd almost call it a stew more than a soup. Well, and that just depends on how much broth you put in or if you want to put something to thicken it up a little. You thicken this up just a little bit and it's definitely a great stew. But I did add my three bay leaves after my tomatoes. and just want to stir those up. Let's do the corn. So the one can of corn and then 32 ounce beef broth. Perfect. I'm gonna put the, uh, the lid on it and we'll see you in about 30 minutes. Look at that, oh my gosh. That smells so delicious. Um, hey, what happened to all the cheese over there? You think I could have a little? <laughs> you know what? He's going to get cheeseburger soup. <laughs> there you go, honey. All right, honey, you want to take a little bite? You know, be careful, it's very hot. Oh. Mm. That is absolutely delicious. delicious. So easy. You can use any vegetables you have in your refrigerator that you need to get rid of and use up. You can use parsnips. You can use cabbage. You can use green beans. Throw whatever you want in, make it your own. But you know what, I really hope you guys try this recipe. Great so, job. Thank you. We'll be right <laughs> Delicious back. Delicious as always. <laughs> we'll be right back with more At Your Leisure. Welcome back to At Your Leisure, everybody. Uh, Scott and I just jumped off those wave runners, and oh, was man. that a kick in the pants? That is just nothing but a <laughs> blast. I love wave runners. I love jet skis. Those Kawasaki's have some power. Oh my gosh, for rentals? Those I know. Things, uh, brand new, so much oh, fun. Oh man, I'm telling you, and yeah. I think they just barely got broke in. Yeah, I think you broke them so in. I probably <laughs> broke it in, but I didn't break it, I promise. But man, those things scoot on the water. They're so much fun. I oh. forgot how much fun it is to be on a jet ski. No, really, when you're out on the water, and we saw those wonderful kayakers out here, yes. you can do anything you want. It. I mean, it doesn't matter what level you're at, you can enjoy this lake. Yeah, it, 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 yeah. it's a great place. And you yeah. know, I don't care what they've said about this. Right. The water level is great. You know, mm -hmm. it's low, but there's still plenty. The lake is big. Yeah. We've seen everybody here. I mean, it's just a great time. I think what we ought to do, is we ought to talk to some of the people that we've run into, and there's a lot of really good people here. Oh yeah, we ran into some wonderful folks, so check Let's this do it. out. Check it out. This area is beautiful. It makes you slow down, and then it makes you really appreciate the small things in life. Instead of like the going from coming from the big city, and then just out here in the middle of nowhere, uh, it is different. It's some getting used to, but um, I really love it. In the summer, I went to Tikaboo, and honestly, that was the best move of my life, going to Tikaboo. Uh, they treat me nice, uh, friendly, everybody's friendly, everybody's appreciative, and it's the best move ever. <laughs> well, I mean, I love Lake Powell and came down and was glad to run into people that I know and see what's going on down here. I came down to see the lake levels and just kind of check out what's happening on the lake. It really sure makes it nice to come down here when there's not lots of crowds, and it, I mean, there's plenty of water, and. Uh, yeah, actually seeing things that you haven't seen. I mean, I grew up coming down to Lake Powell and stuff I haven't seen for 40 years here. And so coming to Lake Powell with the water low is, is, is really exciting to see some of the stuff that you haven't seen for a long time. And, there, and the fact that there's not a lot of crowds, it's, it's, it's paradise. Well, I'm excited about um, a coalition that's formed between the four counties, San Juan, Cane Wayne, and Garfield counties to 
to pay a little bit more attention to Lake Powell, to, to study the economic impacts, the recreation opportunities, the uh, lake levels themselves. From that, we gain a greater pre appreciation for what this lake means, not just in terms of water and hydroelectricity, but in terms of recreation and, and just uh, lifestyle and enjoyment. You know what? Isn't it amazing the people you meet on the lake? I know. <laughs> how coincidental. I right? know. But how about this? This? Look at this. This natural bridge, first time it's exposed right. in over 60 years. Yeah. And here we are. Yeah. Going right under it. I mean, this is fantastic. But really, when Ray was saying, you know, this, it's a new lake. It's a brand new view when you come it out is. here because the water is lower and it's spectacular. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going under that. We're going up the river even farther. While we're doing that, you guys go check out this week's Along the Way. Every year, the charity Children in the Earth hosts the Ride the Brainwave event in Salt Lake City. They bring together different riding communities for a great cause and show that our similarities are greater than our differences. This is our 15th brainwave activity. We started 15 years ago and this activity is a lot different than most of the charity events that you'll ever go to. We have Jeep rallies, we have UTV rally, we have bike rallies, we have jump houses, we have some of the best concerts around. And all of those things are fun, but really what sets us apart is being able to talk to the parents and the children and hearing exactly what they go through. And most of the children that we help with Children of the Earth are terminally ill children. Some of the kids we talked to today had been 26 times to New York City for treatments. Others had had 24 operations and they were four years old. So it really lets you know how fortunate we all are and what the need for charity is. And that need has never been greater. It's easy to get lost in all the fun of the different activities, but an event like this plainly illustrates just how much Children in the Earth means to these families. And for a cause this important, it didn't take long for other groups to get involved and help in any way they could. So once people saw how much fun we had and how much we were helping the community, people wanted to get involved. That's when we started having people volunteer UTV rallies, Jeep rallies. Last night we had a car show for the first time. We had a couple hundred cars. Today we had 250 bikes, 65 Jeeps, 150 UTVs. So we combine all of this in two days now, and we have so much fun, and we collect a lot of money for the children and their families. The UTV ride is just one portion of an event that's, that's huge and goes, it actually goes all weekend. It's a great event. We have three stops that we're doing today. It's a poker run to raise money for children with life-threatening disabilities and illnesses. The nonprofit Children on the Earth is a, is a nonprofit that's been around for a long time, doing great things for, for children. They approached us years ago about doing a, a fundraiser. Um, they've seen our group. We're a big group. We're, we've got almost 40,000 members now in the state of Utah, and they want to somehow incorporate what we do into what they're doing. And it works out well because the side-by-side -side community, we like to give back to the community over and above what we do for recreation. This is now our fourth year doing it, and uh, this year we had over 100-something machines, and we'll raise a lot of money to help these kids. This event is quite large and it takes a lot of volunteers to put it on. We probably have 50 to 60 volunteers from the community that help us today to make it possible. One thing that sets apart Children of the Earth is there's no paid employees. We're all volunteers. We do this because we love it and because we believe in the cause and because we love the children. If you'd like to get involved with Children and the Earth, go to our website at childrenandtheearth.com. We would love to have volunteers. We would love to have additional board members. Anything you can contribute to the kids and their families, we would love to have you. Having a, a child with a life-threatening illness can reach financial devastation on any family. And so the good thing about our group is our members, they love to give back to their, to their community. So it gives us the ability to not only fight to keep trails open, but fight to help these kids that, that financially may need it. Every year it keeps getting bigger and better, and every year we add more events, and next year we want to see you here. Next year, be sure to join in the fun with your machine and lend a hand to these fantastic kids and their incredible families. For this week's Along the Way, I'm Will Oxley.
Welcome back to At Your Leisure, everybody. We are out here in Lake Powell in the most magnificent area on Earth. And, Ray, we have been so many places. Where, where was most of, like, where we were today? Because so, you you've taken us so many places. Well, we launched at Bullfrog, and we came all the way down to the Escalon Arm, up 50 Mile Canyon, uh, to Gregory Natural Bridge, which is the first time it's been exposed in over 60 years. So if you're interested in seeing it, you, you need to come now, because at high water, you won't see it. Absolutely beautiful, and it, it was incredible. Well, I'll tell you what, that was incredible. You guys check out next week's show. Next week, Chad and I are taking the side-by-side -side on a trail that can make you feel out of this world with some spectacular rock formations that you've got to see to believe. Then, we're showing you a picture-perfect trail as the AYL crew joins the folks from Jorgensen's Power Sports for an amazing ride at the Beaver County ATV Jamboree. Finally, we're getting an in-depth look into the Slick Rock crew to show how the Slick Rock brand got started and how it's grown into a monumental piece of the off-road community. Also, don't forget to stay up to date on all the great outdoor events happening near you by visiting the all-new AYLTV.com website and checking out our events page. Well, next week's show looks great. Yes, it does. But not as great as today. No, you know what? Today is beautiful, and I don't care what anybody says. The water here in Lake Powell is just fine. Yep. And we've proven that today because this lake is open, yeah. and it is open for business, and it is as beautiful as ever. And you can see anything you want to see, including some hidden gems that you haven't seen, yeah, and either in a long time or before. Exactly. And we want to give a big shout out to Ray, Captain Ray from Tickaboo Lodge. Indeed. These class act, great, unbelievably quality stuff that they got out here. That all the rentals Wonderful. are brand new. So yes. if you want to come out, now's the time so they don't get beat up. We broke the we broke them all in, <laughs> so they're working today. very well. And you know, with that in mind, remember that there is adventure around every you bed. Just gotta get great. I know. Like look at all of our beds. You just yeah. gotta get out there and create your own adventure. Oh yeah. <laughs> At your leisure. <laughs> <laughs>